I was active, thin, with beautiful skin and had regular periods. At 18, I got a bad bout of acne. Dermatologists suggested creams to apply, antibiotics and also peeling. I was advised to take tests for PCOD. I was found to have polycystic ovaries on my ultrasound. They told me I am a lean PCOS patient. I am a 29-year-old thin woman, married for three years with a very hectic professional life. After three years of trying for a baby, I couldn't get pregnant and to my shock, my doctor told me that I have PCOS. Till now, I believed that only obese or fat women got PCOD. And here I was, told by my doctor, I am a lean PCOS patient. I am 21 years old, staying in a college hostel. I am thin and have regular periods. Lately, I started to see coarse hair appearing all over my body. I got an ultrasound done and was diagnosed with PCOS. I was told I am a lean PCOS patient. So can you be lean, thin or of normal body weight and still have PCOS? The answer is yes. So hello everyone, this is Dr. Anjali Kumar once again bringing you greetings from Maitri. Maitri is a space where we talk anything and everything about women's health. So continuing with our PCOS series, today we talk about a much requested topic by all of you which is lean PCOS. So lean PCOS women are the women who do not have the weight problems but they have all classic symptoms of PCOS like irregular periods, acne, hirsutism, hair fall, insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, diabetes and so on. So what causes a lean woman to develop PCOS? Let's understand that. Number one, abnormal fat and muscle ratio in the body. Even if they are lean, they have less muscle and more fat in the body. Second, increased central or visceral fat in the body. Now let's understand this a little more. The increased fat deposition in the upper part of the body which is around the waist is supposed to be the male pattern of the fat distribution. While in the females, the fat distribution is typically around the hips and thighs. So the increased fat deposition in the upper part of the body increases the risk of the insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, diabetes and obviously PCOS. Then stress. Stress increases the cortisol levels leading to high levels of insulin and high levels of androgen further causing PCOS. Then sedentary lifestyle which leads to poor utilization of sugars and less muscle mass in the body. Obviously wrong dietary choices which leads to high insulin levels. We describe this phenomena in detail in our animated video on insulin resistance last time. Vitamin D deficiency. All of us are practically indoors these days with very very less sun exposure. Gut inflammation again which increases more because of wrong dietary choices and obviously the genetics. So how do we measure the central or the visceral fat? So let's talk of few measurements which actually will help us in defining the central obesity. So traditionally people used to talk of weight and BMI. So weight is something which does not take into account the height. BMI takes into account the height and the weight both but it does not take into account the fat versus the muscle mass in the body. For example, a very muscular athlete may have a high BMI but cannot be called obese. Waist circumference. Now this is a measurement which is a fairly accurate predictor of the central obesity. Waist circumference of more than 80 cm in women increases the risk of insulin resistance and obviously PCOS. Waist-hip ratio. 
of more than 0.86 once again increases the risk of insulin resistance and PCOS. Waist height ratio of more than 0.5 again increases the risk of PCOS and insulin resistance. So next week we are coming out with a small video where we will actually step by step teach you how to take these measurements accurately. So stay tuned for that. So how is lean PCOS different from the obese PCOS? So typically all the symptoms of PCOS like irregular periods, acne, hirsutism, hair fall and infertility are traditionally seen more with the obese patients. While with the lean PCOS patients, we see more stress levels, high anxiety levels, high LH levels and they also have a peculiar phenomena which is called reactive hypoglycemia which is typically that their blood sugar falls dramatically roughly about 1.5 hours after their meals. Now this explains their sugar cravings and increased hunger. So now let's talk about the most important part of this video that how do we treat lean PCOS women. So obviously weight loss is not the aim, rather we have to maintain their weight. At the same time we have to make sure that they do not have any nutritional deficiencies and they do not develop all the complications of PCOS. Exercise. Now that is the main pillar of the lean PCOS treatment protocol. Exercise improves insulin sensitivity, exercise develops muscle in the body, exercise improves fat and muscle ratio in the body and also decreases the central or the visceral fat. Obviously the exercise has to be sustainable, happy and it has to be customized. It's like no plan fits everyone. We need to be focusing more on strength training in the lean PCOS patients. The cardio part has to be kept little lesser. Typically 150 minutes per week is recommended but I feel the minimum 30 minutes per day is something which is definitely required. The strength training should involve upper and lower body both and also involving the major muscle groups. You can also include walking. Uh, once you are comfortable, you can increase the speed, you can put the incline in the walking. HIIT also can be included once you have developed some kind of fitness. Yoga once again does wonders. Yoga is one of the best exercise programs for the strength training because it uses the body's own weight and obviously the meditation, pranayama and the breathing exercises reduce the cortisol levels and the stress and anxiety which is typically seen with the lean PCOS patients. The next most important pillar of the lean PCOS treatment is the diet. Obviously, we are not looking at the weight loss but we are definitely looking at reducing the fat percentage in the body. Once again, the diet has to be culturally acceptable, it has to be seasonal, it has to be sustainable and it has to be customized. Sustainable as in the diet which you can continue for a very long time. Then the diet has to be a good mix of macro and micronutrients. Portion control. Timely eating. Learn to eat according to circadian rhythm. So for all of those who are working in night shifts, for the students who are studying at night, stay away from the late night binges. Stay away from refined sugar, especially fructose. Now there is enough research which says that high fructose diet actually leads to insulin resistance. And do you know how fructose is conveniently hidden in so many common foods like cookies, cakes, even breakfast cereals. Obviously, avoid alcohol. It just gives you neat calories. Lots of fruits, lot of vegetables. Try and include lean proteins in your diet, preferably plant-based. Try and include good fats in your diet, which is seeds, avocados, coconut. Stay away from trans fats, refined fats, refined oils. 
and obviously include lot of good probiotics to take care of that gut inflammation. Adequate sleep. Many years ago, I used to observe that women who are working in BPO sector or having late night shifts are usually the ones who have higher chances of developing PCOS. And now we have enough studies to prove the association of sleep disorders with PCOS. So make sure that you sleep adequately, you sleep deep, you sleep in the night, not in the middle of the day. Then talking about the supplements and the medications. So we actually did a separate video on the supplements for PCOS. So the supplements like vitamin D, vitamin B12, calcium, zinc and inositol. But please take them only after taking a prescription from your doctor. About the medications. Number one, insulin sensitizers like metformin, especially if the test for the insulin resistance is positive. In case you are having trouble conceiving a baby, then the doctor might put you on ovulation inducing drugs or might even take help of ART, which is artificial reproductive technology. In case you are having a lot of androgenic symptoms in the body like acne, hirsutism or hair fall, your doctor might like to put you on the anti-androgens. And in case you have irregular periods which are not coming under control by the above lifestyle measures, sometimes we like to put the patient on the oral contraceptive pill also. It's a fact that lean PCOS patients are often diagnose very late or misdiagnose but it is very important that we all are aware of this condition we recognize it we treat it not only to take care of the existing problem but to prevent all future problems like diabetes hypertension and so on so once again today if you found this information useful please do not forget to share it with your friends and family and please do not forget to follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter and I will see you soon.